What's going on guys? It's Danny from Slow Restoration and we are laying the flooring today. Uh, I didn't record an intro before so this is the intro. Let's jump right into the flooring install. We have vinyl plank flooring going in. Starting the slide first. All right, so when we started, I cut one and a half. These are 48 inch planks. I cut one and a half at 24, laid that down. The next one was a full sheet. We're just staggering the joints like you would in a real hardwood floor. Uh, this one's going to be like three quarters of a sheet. And then the next one will be probably another half sheet and then back to a full sheet. Uh, clicks in pretty easy. Uh, you just lift it up and kind of plop it down and it locks right into place. The only tough part is starting this end uh, and then that at the same time you got to kind of lift this back up to the interlock. It goes down pretty good. So this is the tongue is missing here and that's so you can lift it up put it against. We can go under and actually lock it and then you're gonna lift up once you line this up lift up here and slide this piece down and you're lock it as you go it's very simple it just takes a couple times to get used to how it clicks together as you can see we're well Underway of putting the floor down and so far it's really, really looking killer. Um, it's going to make a drastic difference. The white made a big difference. The flooring is going to tie that white in and I think maybe make the biggest difference. Um, we got a good bit of it laid. The slide is laid. A giant section all the way into the bedroom is laid here. We're just, uh, we have to go back and fill in a couple spots and work our way into the bathroom. Um, <clears throat> I think I've showed this, but um, we're kind of working along here. So let me grab a scrap piece. So they are tongue and groove kind of uh, snap together pieces. You can see the profile there. Um, very easy to go together. If we start down here. This is obviously a scrap piece, but you're going to kind of just put it together like that and it locks in and that will not pull off now. Um, you can slide that back and forth. And then um, as far as hooking into the next one, we'll lift that up. If you, if you go in at an angle, it literally drops right in and locks and won't pull out. Now there's a lot of times you cannot do that. So you actually have to lock it into this one and then slip it over and you're kind of sitting on top like that but if you take and work it in there slightly picking up it'll usually lock in sometimes you actually have to take maybe a scrap piece and a hammer and just tap it in but it will pop right in um, it's it takes a little bit of getting used to how the mechanism works it's pretty efficient and overall it's pretty easy so uh, let's go back here I got my marker here and this is a vent in the floor, a heating re heat register. So we have this loosely put in place where it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and mark this where it needs to be cut out. And then we're going to actually um, slip this in place and do a couple measurements. So this is going to be the, the edges of it and then we'll measure off this We'll measure off this, measure off this to the edge of the register, off this to the edge, put a couple marks, and then same thing from that to the far edge, and that to the far edge. You get the point. I'll show you when I have it marked out before I cut it, and then I'll show you how it snaps in. So as you can see here, we have that all marked out. And I think you can see it, let me twist it a little bit. So right here is that register. So. Uh, it is going to be a plunge cut. This stuff is very easy to work with. You can cut it uh, multiple different ways. I have a chop saw 
set up out there. So if I'm just cutting them to length, and by the way, you can't just cut these. So I couldn't cut this end and then join it to there because it would be missing the lip. But if you're going on that direction or that direction and you need to cut it to start off a wall or cut it to finish on a wall, um, chop saw works very quickly, cuts it clean like butter. Um, otherwise you can take a razor blade, score it, and it just kind of snaps off. Um, with this being a, a square out of the center, a rectangle out of the center, uh, we are going to actually take and plunge cut with a multi-tool. So let's get this outside and I'll show you how to do that. This does make a little bit of a mess, so I like to do it kind of outside. We have our DeWalt multi-tool and it works very good for making plunge cuts. You pretty much just line it up. Turn this thing on you have to hold it and steady it as good as you can and you can plunge cut and then cut wherever you need to so we got this side plunged and we'll do that side i'll just set you up here and see if we can catch this whole thing so pretty much you're just going to steady this thing on the sides and now we could we could score that and break that out or since we have this and we're already set up I'm just gonna zip it in. our edges and we'll give it a test fit it does help to have a nice sharp uh, bit on your multi-tool mines a little bit dull it still cuts it no problem but you will have less burrs and edges if you have a nice new sharp bit but we got cut out so like I said we're gonna kind of lift this up and install this on the edge we'll slip it over as much as we can drop that down and we'll Kind of start working this way, working the way our way over. There we go. Pop it up on top of that tongue. Now it's just a matter of squeezing that down in there. Probably going to take two hands to do, but you can see our hole is really close here. We popped out here, so I'll have to fix that. But our register hole is pretty close. We're looking good. I'm happy with that. We'll get that put on, then we can drop our register back in. It has a screw on either end, which will help hold all this together. With that snapped in there, it's one more piece to the puzzle of this floor. Now we can keep right on going right to the end, so which will include another register there for our next piece. No big deal, we'll do it the same way. Or we can do it kind of like you're, if you're familiar with roofing, um, you can stagger and run three or four up if you have a longer length. So we can start with another piece on, down there. Uh, another thing to think about is your brake lines. Now this stuff has pretty tight brake lines, but the coloring will show you where they are. So um, you do have to think about that. So you're not gonna just f do full piece, full piece, full piece, or all of your brake lines are gonna line up. So uh, you do need to stagger your joints. And I prefer a random stagger and not something that's uniform so you it, it will if you do something uniform so you make one cut another cut and then a full piece or however you want to do it then you'll have those stagger joints the same all the way down your floor and it'll be a repeating pattern some people like that i prefer to have a total random pattern but either way um we're, we'll see what a full piece does but chances are we're gonna need to trim and then run down I prefer to run a couple at a time again it's personal preference uh, there's a lot done 
and I'm going to show you a couple of the challenges. Um, we do need to notch around all this stuff and put a piece here. Fortunately, it will um, terminate into that wall, so it doesn't matter. We can start right here and we'll be perfectly fine. We have that to deal with, and then we can start moving into the, the bathroom here. But uh, we did get all the way back here into the bedroom over until that wall. So if we come through here, we got around that vent. We even got all the way back to the next wall. Our issue now is obviously I can't keep coming with full strips this way because we need to finish this and get over here. The, the situation that's going to present is this is going to come into this room through here somewhere and that is also going to come through the doorway. So we already worked our way around this side. It's kind of a circle here. So we worked our way around this side. We're going to work our way this this way. So if this ends up not matching up 100%, I mean, it looks like we have maybe mm, seven runs to come, um, which isn't a terrible far distance to come. But if building this way and what we already have built that way doesn't match up exactly perfectly, there's going to be a gap when these two pieces join together and that to me is going to be unacceptable. So in that case, if we can't make that work, we're just going to end up cutting uh, right here with this pocket door and put a transition strip. So worst case scenario, it's going to have a transition strip right here where this pass through uh, between the bathroom and the master bedroom is going to be uh, best case Best case scenario is all this matches up and we can come right through here and join right back in. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but um, I think we can do it. And th there's only one way to find out. There you go. There's our flooring install. And I know you're dying to see whether we made it around that circle in the bathroom there. We'll get to that in a second. But as you can see, we got our registers dropped in. Um, they actually, they're the registers that came with the camper and they match perfectly. We'll give them a good clean before we screw them down. Other than that, we're good. Uh, we're getting ready to do uh, finish up the 100% the floor. We did get that piece cut and installed around there, of course, and then we worked our way through. Uh, the the baseboard we're actually going to we were going to use quarter round. I think we're actually going to switch it up a little bit and use this. I think this is polystyrene. I think this stuff's made out, so it's really lightweight. It's got a nice look to it and it's very stable. It'll work perfect for a camper application. And if you can see the profile, it actually has like a mini baseboard look to it. And it's still gonna do the job of covering up the edges. Again, you do have to leave a expansion joint or you should around all edges here. So let's go around the side here and we were successfully able to go around here. As you can see, this all lined up perfectly. It actually, I was surprised how, uh, I know this stuff's all manufactured and it should work out, but whenever you have fairly long distances with nothing to dedicate, um, is, so it's separated, this wall, we went over that before, but um, yeah, it worked out good. Um, it, this end is just kind of floating so we just stack all them together and again it worked out good so no transition strip here we have some cleanup and like I said we have that baseboard to put around we'll really clean it up um, we did get a, our door back on our cabinet this is I don't think I've showed this yet so this is the bowl we're actually going to use so I'm going to try and work on that maybe today get that mounted here's the dream we have to mark and drill our hole bolt all that together and here is the faucet we ended up going with again we'll have to drill a hole get all that bolted in and then we can actually um, finish this whole vanity up I think that came out killer looks really good before we actually do that we're going to do the wallpaper on the back wall a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's always 15 different projects that need to be wrapped up and details here and there that need to be taken care of. But as far as the flooring goes, um, it's pretty much done. So it's looking really good. We'll step back here. 
You see a longer shot of it. Uh, obviously we have some cleanup to do, but looks good. One other quick point to mention, as you, you might have noticed when we were laying, when we very first started, we did the slide and we did leave the insulation on the slide. So when you do this vinyl plank flooring, you really should, it should be on a solid surface. That slide really doesn't get walked on. Um, it's got a, um, a dinette table uh, and a couch. So most of that slide won't actually get walked on. Uh, we decided to leave the insulation there for the R value it adds and uh, not remove it. I've seen people do it either way. Um, hopefully this all works out good and we do have a transition strip we'll show you later but um, on the main floor section it's right on the plywood so and it is floating we did not glue down either so put this at the end so if you are asking those questions in the comment I know you didn't watch all the way to the end so again thanks for stopping by have a good day